Hello, we are going to be starting a new chapter. We're only doing a couple sections, but I want to get this in so that you are better prepared for trigonometry next year. This is going to be a brief um, introduction to trigonometry. Trigonometry is great for triangles, and we are going to be using triangles that have a right angle in them, so they'll be called right triangles. Now there are six functions that come from trigonometry, and they are ratios of lengths of sides of the right triangle. So we have the sine, the cosine, the tangent, the cosecant, this is an N, the secant and the cotangent, and my dog walking across my kitchen floor. She's in bad need of having her, her being groomed. <laughs> so we're gonna start off with a right triangle. Now here's our right triangle, and here's our hypotenuse. Maisie, go away. Here's our angle theta. This is the opposite side because it's opposite the angle, completely opposite. This is adjacent because it's right next to it. Now there is a way to remember how the ratios of these signs work, and we like to use the so katoa sounding like an Indian chief, so katoa. So this is the sine, cosine, and tangent, and what they end up being is ratios. If you look at this, you'll see that the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is the opposite over adjacent. Ratios of the sides of them. Now what I want you to notice that the sine and the cosecant are reciprocals. Notice how the hypotenuse is in the numerator, denominator here, and they're reciprocals. The same with cosine and secant, they're reciprocals. And the tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. So when I go to solve a triangle and find out what all the sides are, I set it up this way because once I find these, these are just their reciprocals. So if you write these down in the same order and you find these three, then you just flip them around for these three. It's easier to do that way. And this is basically what I just said, that the cosecant is a reciprocal of the sine, the secant is a reciprocal of the cosine, and the cotangent is a reciprocal of the tangent. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to solve one of these triangle problems. I'll leave that right there for now. I'm going to draw a triangle it's going to be a right triangle, and it's not drawn to scale. So this is example one. And I'm going to make this side, like again, like I said, it's not to scale. This is five. I could because I do have these little uh, squares. And 12. And I'm going to call this angle theta. This is a right angle. I could call this one theta, but I'm going to call this one theta. Now what I do know from this is that this is the opposite side, so 12 is the opposite. This is adjacent right next to it, so this is gonna be the adjacent. I'm just gonna use three letters. This is a hypotenuse. Now I don't know what the hypotenuse is, but if you recall, if I were to say this was A and this was B and this was C, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. So we can find out what the hypotenuse is c squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared. And if you recall from Mr. Wakely, this is a special triangle. c is going to be 13. Now remember, when we take the square root, it's plus or minus, but we're never going to have a negative length on a triangle, so we only ever call that positive. If we had c squared is equal to 169, it would be plus or minus 13, but you can see that there would be no reason to say this is negative. So this is going to be the hypotenuse is 13. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my uh, trig functions up here. So I wanna find the sine of theta. I wanna find the cosine of theta. I wanna find the tangent of theta. And over here, I'm gonna come and put the reciprocals. So this is going to be the cosecant of theta. I messed up there, sorry guys, that's CSC. This one is going to be the secant, and this one's going to be the cotangent. 
Now, since I have these already written up here, I'm just going to, keep going to use them as a reference. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite 12 over the hypotenuse 13. The cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Adjacent, that's 5 over 13. And then the tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. Opposite over the adjacent 5. Now I come over here and I just take their reciprocals, 13 twelfths. 13 fifths and 5 twelfths. Another special um, fun, uh, relation that I want you to know is that I'm going to come back here and I'm going to put it up here next to these guys. The tangent is special. The tangent of theta is going to be our sine of theta divided by the cosine theta. You'll use that a lot in trig when you get to Mrs. Vesneski's class. Now, I want you to notice that if I took the sine and divided it by the cosine, the 13s would cancel and I'd have 12 fifths, so it does work out. Okay, let's do another problem. Let me move this up a little bit. Let's do one where we have square roots involved, where it's not, the hypotenuse is not perfect. So example number two. I'm going to do a right triangle. And this side's going to be one, and this side's going to be one. So what is that called when we have a triangle that has two equal sides? Let's see if you guys know that. It's not an equilateral. It's an isosceles. So what we need to do is we need to find, let's have this be our angle theta right here that we're looking at. So opposite is one, adjacent is also one. We need to find the hypotenuse, and the hypotenuse is going to be c squared is equal to one squared plus one squared. So it's, it's two, so c is the square root of two. Once again, remember, that it is just going to be um, positive. You can still see those, so that works out well. I'm going to put my sine, the angles that I'm trying, or the functions that I'm trying to find, sine of theta, cosine theta, tangent of theta, and then over here, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Looking up here, the sign is the opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. One over the square root of two. But remember how we don't like to have square roots in the denominator. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna remind you how we do this. If we have one over the square root of two and we wanna rationalize that denominator, we multiply top and bottom by the square root of two and this becomes the square root of two over the square root of two times square root of two is the square root of four, the square root of four is two. So that rationalized becomes the square root of two over two. This is going to be the same thing, one over the square root of two, which is root two over two when we rationalize it, since they're identical. And the tangent is opposite over adjacent, one over one which is just one. Now the reason why I wrote these, I left this here, is because I don't want to have to rationalize it again. I don't want to use that to go backwards. If you can see, I have one over the square root of two. The reciprocal of that is just the square root of two over one. You don't need the one, I'm just showing it. Same here, square root of two, and this is just one. So that's how we find those. And right now I'd ask if anybody had any questions, but I can't do that. So we are going to move on to the next type of problem, next example. All right. Now look at this one. 
they actually tell us one of the functions and they want us to find the other five. So what they're telling us is that the secant of theta is 12 over five. And I need to fix this. This is 12 over five. All right, now what we need to do is we can do the cosine right away. This is going to be five over 12. So what do we know about the secant? Well, we know the secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So if we were to draw this triangle, what we know is if this is the angle theta, the hypotenuse is 12, and the adjacent side is five, so I need to find this side. So let's say this is B. We know that 12 squared is equal to five squared plus B squared. So this is going to be 144 equals 25 plus B squared. And there's my dog again, making loud noises. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. So 144 minus 25, it's going to be nine, 119. So B is going to be the square root of 119. And 119 is a prime number. So this is the square root of 119. Now, if you look at this, we want to find sine. And if you recall, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite, square root of 119, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. Cosine was 5 over 12. So the tangent is going to be the opposite over adjacent. Opposite, 100 square root of 119, divided by 12. Now when we come over here, it's a little bit more complicated. This is going to be 12 over the square root of 119. Now I'm going to come, let's come over here so we can do this. So 12 over the square square root of 119. Multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 119. And I get 12 root 119 divided by 119. That's not a very pretty picture, but that's what it is. So this is 12 root 119 over 119. This one's going to be Okay, does anybody see where I screwed up? They're not both. That's not going to be true. That's going to be the square root of 119 divided by 5. Guys, I am so terribly sorry about that, but thank heavens we figured it out before we, we ended the problem. So that one is just going to be, if you look at that, it's going to be the same type deal. It's going to be 5 over root 119. or 5 root 119 divided by 119. And I'm just gonna skip this one for now. Okay, so I'm going to assign you some where you have to figure out all six of these functions using the three sides being adjacent, um, opposite, and the hypotenuse. And you'll have those ratios given to you so that you can actually find them. I hope everybody's doing well. That last sentence didn't make very much sense, but I'm not gonna edit it. I, uh, we're getting close to the end. Let me just explain to you what we've got going here. We have, um, we have two sections to do in this chapter, and then I want to do another section of a different chapter that you'll need to know how to expand binomials, expanding binomials shortcut way. What I mean by that, and I'll show you, say like you have 
a plus b and you want to raise it to the fourth power. I'm going to show you a way to do this that you don't have to do a plus b and you don't have to foil it out all the time. I'm going to give you a formula and a way to do that. So we're going to do that. And then a review on uh, factoring because I can't send you to Mrs. Vesneski without knowing how to factor. It just wouldn't be good. And then we'll be done. So once again, recap. Two sections from chapter 13. How to expand a binomial and a few problems to do for review on factoring. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care.